We're the Sticklers, and this is... Jane. And I'm Kent. Guy was our second child. He was born when uh, Kent was a senior in college. Watching Guy grow up was very interesting. He, we knew how smart he was. Th there was something special about him. We didn't quite know what it was. Uh, he was very introverted and very quiet in groups, large groups. He'd go into the shower and he'd pull the shower curtain, get a pillow, and he'd read. <laughs> and so by 10 years old, he had read all of John Steinbeck's novels. We thought that was unusual. <laughs> we thought that was unusual, so we had this child. He had many, a lot of good memories. He had many interests. Um, after John Steinbeck, <laughs> he switched to comic books. And after the comic books came music and uh, movies. We think for sure he had a photographic memory because he, he didn't forget anything about a movie. I'm giving a speech in Indianapolis in my class as a mother, and she's got this child, and uh, it's, it's the child, she starts to describe some of the characteristics of her child. And she mentions her child has Asperger's, and I knew nothing about Asperger's at the time. I'm not even sure I remember, even knew, had heard the word or anything, which is a high-functioning form of autism. And I say that sounds like my, it sounds like guy. Now, guys, in the, you know, in his 20s, maybe early 30s at that time. Then we, after all this goes on, we go to a psychiatrist, and it really gets confirmed. Well, because of the diagnosis, there was a requirement. It led to a lot, some other things which required medications. And so Guy would be on medications that caused depression problems. Uh, he was having some problems with digestive systems, so stress. he was taking stress and he was taking medications for that. It was a Friday night and I went over. We hadn't seen Guy for a day or two and because of his situation, we lived in a condo and we bought the condo right next door for Guy and his son. And so I went over on a Friday night, just hadn't seen him for a day or two, and I walked in and, and his car was in the garage. and. The music was playing, the lights were on. Uh, I looked in the kitchen, there was a, a milk carton still with milk and it got warm and it kind of irritated me. He wouldn't put it back in the refrigerator. <laughs> but I assumed maybe he'd gone out with one of his friends, so I went, went back home right next door. Saturday morning I get up and I'm going to the gym to work out, it's about 8.15. And I just, I don't know, said I'll go check on Guy, it was, you know, right next door. So I go in and the door's unlocked. Uh, the music's playing, uh, the same lights are on, and the metal card's still out. And uh, so I go and finally decide I'm going to empty the metal card because I sat all night long. And, and I happen just to glance to my right, and I notice behind the kitchen table, I know Sky's feet. And right away, I bend over, and uh, probably the worst time in my entire life, he, he's not alive. The time since then has not been easy. There's no word to describe the peace that the Holy Spirit gives you through times like this. It's just unbelievable. Um, there's even an odd joy there, just the comfort, because we knew immediately, and I believe 100% with all my heart, we'll be with him again, and he'll have a clear brain. It'll be wonderful. Every morning in my devotions, uh, there's a part of my devotions in my prayer life where I thank God for things. And I have a little rule, I thank Him for 10 things every morning. And number six on my list is I thank God every morning for Guy's faith. You know, I read the other day a quote, uh, one of the problems of being an atheist is who do you talk to when you're alone? <laughs> and that kind of reminds me that without faith and you lose people like a child, who do you talk to without your faith? So the faith, uh, it's, all, it's, it's all it is, it's all. It's, the hope is, is huge, and the idea of being able to see Guy again, mm. healthy and happy, is huge, huge. <laughs>